What's the point? Joining me now to discuss is Don Ogilvie, independent chairman at the Deloitte Center for Banking Solutions, Andrew Ross Sorkin, reporter at the New York Times, and Harry Rady, CEO and portfolio manager at Rady Asset Management. Welcome to the program, gentlemen. We'll start with Don, who's here in studio. You're not expecting this to produce a pass-fail kind of outcome, Don. So what's the point? Why even go through the effort to put this information out there? Well, I, I, they were not intended to be pass-fail for sure, and I don't think they will be pass-fail. It was the intent behind them is to provide some indication to the markets that these banks can go through a really difficult stress in the future and come out okay in terms of their So capital. to build confidence, you build think confidence, that they're to build confidence. Sure. Will they yeah, accomplish that, sure. Harry? Um, I don't think so. You know, I think that it's an important data point um, to have additional transparency to what's on the bank's balance sheets. But I think these banks are going to continue to squirrel away money in the forms of building reserves. And I think that's going to happen for some time to come. So I think what the, the results of the stress test is kind of uh, irrelevant. Now, when you talk about them squirreling away money in the form of reserves, are you saying their loan loss provisions are going to continue to go up? Or you're saying that, in fact, they're just going to continue to set aside money rather than lend it out? I think a little of both, but I was referring to loan loss reserves. Because, Andrew, I mean, in this earnings season, at least from what we've seen, there were a number of the big banks out there that, in fact, sort of fell below what Wall Street was hoping in the loan loss provisions department, in the credit quality department. Right. And when a number of analysts looked beyond the bare numbers, the idea that, you know, profits beat estimates, they looked at the credit quality component, the loan loss component, the deteriorating, in Ken Lewis's own words, the CEO of Bank of America, the deteriorating credit environment going forward, many came back and said, wait a minute, these things are not as safe as maybe the profit numbers would show. Absolutely. And that's why the stress test is so important. The big issue is how, how truthful are the stress test results really going to be? Is it going to be a whitewash? If we actually hear and, and actually look through the numbers and you see that Citigroup, for example, or Bank of America gets in, in a lot of trouble, you might believe the results, but I'm not sure that's going to instill a lot of confidence because I think then you're going to have a whole new problem. If the, result, if the stress test comes back and everybody looks quite swell, I think you're not going to believe the results at all, in which case you're so also going to undermine confidence. So we have to see a doomsday so, scenario, it, it, at least for Andrew to believe it. Excuse me? We have to see a doomsday scenario out of the stress uh, test in the, order the for sad, you to believe no, it. I think the sad news is for the market to really say this stress test is meaningful and the results are meaningful is you probably need to see one or two banks be in more trouble than you'd want. I mean, it, it, there is a curve to this. You, you, everyone cannot get an A. Don, do you expect to see that one or two or maybe even a handful of banks not coming out of the stress test looking rosy? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if some banks need more capital. Mm -hmm. Now, whether that's not considered rosy or not, it, only time will tell. Uh, and I don't think anybody really knows. But I wouldn't be surprised if one or more banks needed additional capital. And that's certainly, at least from what we've heard from Geithner, and particularly in his testimony today, Harry, is that at, at least from what he told us today, and it was sort of a different line uh, than what we heard from the administration over the weekend, uh, talking about the potential for sort of a backdoor nationalization, converting the preferred uh, TARP into uh, common equity in these banks. What we heard today from Geithner, on the other hand, is that these banks, by and large, have enough capital. So. So where do you sort of, what do you believe? The market at least would indicate uh, that at least there's this perception from today's commentary that the banks are healthier. Yeah, I think that, you know, our job as a long short equity manager is to look for opportunity both on the long and the short side. And right now with this recent rally and this uh, newfound optimism, we're seeing extraordinary opportunity on the short side. And I'd just like to give you an example. We don't have a short on Morgan Stanley, but this is something that's kind of coming into short territory. It's likely that they're going to be unable to pay back the TARP. And that's going to be a significant advantage for Goldman Sachs if they're allowed to pay back the TARP. In addition to that, on Morgan Stanley's balance sheet, they have $40 billion of real estate assets. Now, some of that is hedged, but on an uh, asset-to-equity basis, that's almost 150% and the stock's up 50% in the last six weeks. So we're seeing opportunities like that on the short side, and we're not seeing a whole lot on the long side. But you know what, that comment, exact, it speaks exactly to why these stress tests are, are so important and why it's going to be very hard to believe them, which is to say that if the stress test comes back and tells you that Morgan Stanley is stronger than you believe, uh, you're still going to be short that stock, I imagine, as are others. And if they come back and tell you that Morgan Stanley is in trouble, 
Uh, well, boy, I think we're going to be worried as a market about all the other banks. Harry, you're shaking your head. Yes. Uh, it's just a data point, you know, and I, I think that, um, you know, it's incumbent upon uh, us equity managers to use that as a data point in the context of our own analysis. And so it's going to be an important uh, data point, but I'm not going to make an investment decision based purely on that uh, on the stress test. I want to come back around, Andrew, to the earnings quality question, because it's something uh, that you pointed out right. in your column. And I want to go into that more deeply in terms of where you see uh, the critical components of earnings quality potentially falling astray and what the ramifications are for things well, going I think forward. The, the, the big worry is if you look at all of the banks who come out with earnings over the past week, Every single one of them has done something a little different, a little special, a little, <laughs> it's a little bit of a magic trick to, to boost the earnings, but it's all one time. It can't be repeated. Uh, some of it's an accounting gimmick. Some of it's, you know, Bank of America is selling a, a piece of the China, China bank. These are things you cannot do again. You got to look at the underlying business. And to the extent the underlying business, by the way, is doing okay, that's in part because we're loaning them money at 0% interest. They're loaning it out at 4 to 12% interest to other people. Um, it's very hard to lose money doing that. But you know what? The government can't do that forever either. And so those, I think we got to look at the underlying business. You got to strip away all these other issues. And, and, and then, by the way, at least in my book, when you start thinking about stress tests, you start getting nervous. Don, what's your take on the, the underlying business and the quality of earnings? Well, I think it's important to remember that one quarter doesn't make a trend, mm -hmm. right? So we're going to have to see more numbers coming out here. Andrew may be right that there may be unrepeatable things in some of these first uh, numbers. But I think by the second, second and third quarter, we'll get a much better sense of whether the core banking business is really solid and it's going to continue to grow. So for those who might be risk averse out there who are looking at the financials, maybe wait till the second or third quarter. Is that what you're saying for more transparency, more clarity on that? Well, I think it depends on how much risk you're willing to take. But, mm -hmm. but to the extent that you're interested in it, I think you're not going to really see good data for two or three quarters. All right. Thank you so much, Don, you Harry, bet. and Andrew. Great thank to you. have all of you with us. And I'm going to send things back over to Scott. Okay, thanks. Rebecca, thanks so much. 35 minutes.